I spent many hours making sure everything was organized before my two-week vacation. I leaned back in my desk chair and turned to admire the scenery outside the window behind my desk when I heard the inevitably sweet voice of my assistant. So, Luke, are you ready for the big day? As never before, Melanie, this is not the first time for me. Make sure this is the last time, okay, boss? No need to set a record for most marriages in a decade. I smiled. Are you kidding me? Maybe a little, but you're too good a guy to go through all this crap you went through. Call a spade a spade, Mel. That was a bunch of bullshit. Are you ready to leave? Is there anything I should keep an eye on? No, I think we've covered everything. Thanks for asking me to leave after Wednesday for the wedding on Saturday. Tonight I can just go to the pub and relax before diving into the sea of details on Thursday and Friday. I'm glad that we decided to make this wedding small. So, will you complain to HR if your assistant hugs you? I've never done this before. Melanie has been one of my closest friends and a very special person to me since the day I hired her shortly after accepting a position at Personal Wealth Financial almost ten years ago. I will never forget interviewing her for her job. Her resume made her the best candidate, but when she walked into my office, I saw a rather shy, thin girl who seemed shy and reserved. It didn't take long for me to notice the redness around her nose and slightly dark eyes. The poor girl was sick as a dog, but still fought to get through the interview. I was so impressed that I invited her for a second interview. Then I met a real dynamo with an overflowing personality. True, she was not outwardly attractive. She was skinny and didn't seem to have enough butt to hold up her pants. However, I learned that she was full of confidence and personality, and she exuded a beauty that could be learned from some of the most beautiful girls I knew. Her husband was a lucky man. I decided to relax for a few hours at my favorite pub near my home in Kirkland, Washington, and eat a light dinner. Kaylee, the bartender, has filled many roles for me over the years. Her beautiful red hair framed the stern face of the woman who was my second mother, confidant, advisor, and caring friend. When she was young, I'm sure she was quite attractive, but hard living and smoking left their mark on her features in the late 40s. But to me, she was a wonderful person. She saw me at my worst and always seemed to find the right words when I needed them. The pub was sparsely stocked and had the familiar smell of fried food and an atmosphere of soothing, raw emotion. As I walked towards the bar, Kaylee looked at me and smiled. Mr. Three Deceptions in the Wind, how is my favorite client doing? Better than I deserve, Kaylee. Are you still chained to that guy or are you ready to run away with me? What? And ruin your lovely bride's big day this Saturday. So, business as usual, Luke? Yes. As Kaylee hurried to the tap, I noticed an attractive woman sitting alone three chairs away from me. I guessed she was in her mid-thirties. She was biting her lower lip and showing a slight smile, apparently caused by my interaction with Kaylee. I decided to be friendly and greeted her. Hello? Her brow furrowed and her suspicious eyes sized me up. You don't look drunk. I raised an eyebrow. That's the most interesting greeting anyone has ever given me. No, I'm not drunk. The bartender said you were three sheets in the wind. I assumed that meant she thought you were drunk. Oh, I laughed. That's her nickname for me. But it's not three sheets. It's three lies. Great. Another guy who can't keep it in his pants. She seemed to bite her lip harder, and there was a look of displeasure on her face that told me this was personal to her. Just as I was about to answer, Kaylee placed my beer in front of me and came to my aid. Lady... Luke here is one of the sweetest and most loyal men I have ever met. He was not a cheater. A look of distress appeared on her face and her lips began to tremble. Sorry. I was pretty sure tears were close to appearing, so I nervously extended my hand in greeting, hoping to avoid the emotional torrent that seemed inevitable. No problem. I'm Luke. She quickly shook my hand as if she was afraid of human contact. No, I'm sorry. I guess you can call me damned too many times to count, or just Linda. Nice to meet you, Linda, briefly. Sorry. Sensitive topic? Her mood improved significantly with my stupid joke. I hate making a woman cry, and the change in her mood was a welcome development. Yes, definitely a sensitive topic, 
but I think your three-cheat experience has a fascinating story. Probably, but I'm not sure you want to hear it. Come on, Luke. Tell her your story, Kaylee intervened. It's exciting. Linda faked a pout at me. Please? You two won't give me a choice, will you? No, they answered in unison. Okay, okay. Let's see. Where should I start? Life doesn't always turn out the way we expect. I knew my marriage was over long before our first anniversary. Funny thing is, I wasn't too upset about the end of the marriage, but my confidence took a hit. I first started dating Harper in our senior year of school. I was 18 years old, a virgin, and she was also 18, and she was far from innocent. I didn't really seek out her company, but we bonded over a group of friends. I should have said no, but my little brain beat my big brain in this decision. My teammates herded me into the locker room after the game. Luke, when will you stop hanging out with the airship and find a girl worthy of our protector? Chuck, you talk about Aubrey like that again and I'll lay you out. She's not a blimp, just a little cozy, but I like her, and even though we're not dating, she's my best friend. Okay, but you need a real girl who will give it her all. We need to pop your cherry. I don't need your help with sex. Move away. Ted intervened to calm me down. Hey, Luke, sorry. It's just, well, Harper was telling my girlfriend that she'd really like to hang out with you. Harper may be gorgeous, but she likes to hang out with everyone who wears pants. This is not what I need. She's not really like that. She's cute and she likes you. Come to my party tomorrow night. She will be there. Just see if there is chemistry between you. What harm can it do? The guys were very cruel when it came to my friend Aubrey. She wasn't a sleek, skinny model, but she was exactly what I liked. She had a healthy, girl-next-door face that I knew would remain gorgeous well into middle age and beyond. We weren't actually dating, but there was no difference because we were always together. In truth, I found her to be exceptionally beautiful both inside and out. If I had my way, I would have wanted us to be each other's first lovers, but she had a moral core that I admired and I tried to emulate. We grew up in church together, and I wanted to be true to my beliefs. Unfortunately, those damn teenage hormones destroyed the weak defenses I had built around my chastity. At Theta's party, Harper searched for me like a heat-seeking missile aimed at its target. Luke, Ted said you'll be here. Hi, Harper. You look good. Good enough to eat? Uh, well, I don't... Relax, Luke. I'm just messing with you. She wasn't joking with me. Within an hour, we were in some bedroom, and before half the night had passed, my sexual experience had changed on many levels. I was in a state of lust. Aubrey understood immediately. She seemed hurt, but accepted my turn to the dark side. A few weeks later, she started dating Dennis, our team's center. Knowing that Aubrey would take it slow, I teased them both that, being the protector, I had my hands in Dennis's crotch more often than Aubrey. She didn't like it, and Dennis told me to calm down. I apologized to both of them and felt quite embarrassed afterwards. The way they called me out made me feel ashamed of my mercurial attitude, but after all, I was a stupid teenager. I started to distance myself from Aubrey and Dennis. Looking back, I realized that I was living in a darkness that made the light around them make me uncomfortable. I wanted to have fun, but being around them dampened my enjoyment. Harper and I dated and explored each other for the rest of the school year and the following summer. I liked our relationship. She was hot and knew how to use her well-developed talents. She was also easy to talk to, and we found that we had many common interests and views. After months of bliss, I began to fall in love with her. Harper was planning to go to Washington State in the fall, and I was going to Indiana to attend Purdue on a football scholarship. Even though I fell in love with her, I knew that the long distance would be difficult for both of us. We agreed not to isolate ourselves and get together when we were both at home. My hormones and party instincts ruled my life for the first two years of college. True to our word, Harper and I hit it off while we were home. We never discussed what happened while we were apart, and that seemed wise of us. I found myself comparing every girl I dated to Harper 
and none of them made it to the mark. I missed her more and more, and couldn't wait to see her again. I started calling her more often and felt that she felt the same as me. My love for her grew, although thousands of miles separated us. Some level of maturity and responsibility emerged around freshman year. The values I was taught as a child filled my mind, and I was tired of the emptiness that seemed to be part of my chaotic lifestyle. From that point on, I was only close to Harper and started thinking about how to propose. The summer before my senior year, I needed to know what Harper thought about our relationship. Baby, can we talk about something? Of course, Luke. Are you all right? You look pretty serious. Well, yes, I thought a lot, and I guess the first two years of college I was, well, a little girl crazy. I always loved you and knew that we would be together. Again, but I was on edge and the girls were so, sort of, available. Were you like that with guys? I, I dated a few times for fun, but I always wanted it to be with you. I mean, no one else could compare, you know? Yes, I know. I figured you hang out with guys and that's normal. That's what we agreed on. But this year was different for me. It began to seem to me that I was cheating and I realized that I wanted to be alone, a woman man with you. I wanted you to know that I haven't kissed a girl since we were together last summer. I hope maybe that you can promise me that you feel the same. I love only you, Luke. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Will you, I mean, will you marry me? Harper jumped into my lap and started jumping up and down, shouting, Yes, yes, yes. We made love and then lay next to each other and began sharing our dreams of a life together. She suddenly sat up with a worried expression on her face. You don't want to get married now, before our senior year, do you? No. Maybe a few months after we graduate. Harper seemed relieved by this. I assumed she was thinking about what would be practical, but it still bothered me a little. I also realized that I never received an answer regarding her recent loyalty but she waved a magic wand that made me believe that she was faithful only to me. At that moment, it was a small thorn in my mind, but it began to haunt me again. Harper got a job at a real estate agency, and I started my career at a financial planning company, Personal Wealth Financial. We got married in December of that year, and I thought I was happy. I was determined to return to the faith I had grown up with but it became obvious that Harper was not interested in spiritual matters. I began to realize that living with someone gives much more insight into who they really are. I didn't have to wait too long after the wedding for the first sign of anxiety to appear. Harper talked me into cutting short our honeymoon in California's wine country so we could attend a New Year's party with more of her friends, most of whom she knew from college. I hardly saw my newlywed all night. The party took place in the dance hall, which we rented together. Harper rushed around the room, chatting with everyone. Sometimes I didn't know where she was. Several of her friends kept me busy, almost as if this was their assignment for the night. I had to carry the limp Harper into the car and into our apartment. She was very considerate and apologetic about her behavior at the party, so I forgave her. But over the next year, many things accumulated in my mind that I could not come to terms with. A year has passed, and it's time for another New Year's party in the same place. I didn't really want to go, but I also felt obligated to see what Harper does when she's alone with her friends. I figured I had a better chance of seeing the real Harper if she didn't think I was there. So, at the last minute, I backed out, citing an upset stomach. Harper almost seemed relieved that I was staying home. I let the party go on for a few hours and then showed up around ten. I tried to remain inconspicuous when I arrived. It didn't take long for me to see Harper across the room. A group of six guys stood around her, and they all took turns exchanging passionate kisses with her. Then I saw her drag one of them by the hand into the corridor, leading to the small dance halls. The others retreated, exchanging high fives and looking like they were standing in line. I stood there for a while wondering what to do and decided that I had to see what would happen next. I crossed the room but I couldn't go unnoticed by Harper's friend, Amy. Luke, Harper said you're homesick. Get out of my way, Amy. Luke, please don't go there. 
I grabbed her hands and looked her straight in the eyes. Why? What will I see? Amy began to shake with fear. She could see the anger building inside me, and I did little to hide it. Luke, you won't like this. Please don't go. She really loves you. I pushed her aside and followed my wife. There, in the practice room, my wife was kissing and starting to undress with a guy she had voluntarily brought into the room. I wanted to rush in and smash them to smithereens. Instead, without being noticed, I took a few photos with my phone and went home. At home, I printed out one of the photos and left it on the table with my wedding ring. I packed enough clothes for the week and headed to the Holiday Inn. It was strange. I sat in the room, feeling like I had to cry or vent my anger. Instead, it was more like I finally had answers to all the questions that had been building up in my mind. I left her in the dark for a few days while I looked for a small furnished apartment, then called to set up a meeting and talk. Luke, where the hell are you? How could you just leave? I'll come over tonight to talk. Luke, please. I'm sorry about what you saw. It was... Shut up, Harper. We'll talk tonight. I'll be there at seven. I hung up the phone and searched for some emotion to grab onto. The emptiness definitely came over me. A little anger and a healthy dose of ego damage kicked in too, but I had an overwhelming sense of relief. Of course, I spent a little over a year on it. Somehow, my discovery of the real Harper justified what my growing suspicions had been telling me. Our relationship had never really been right. My thoughts went back to a conversation I had with my father many years ago. We were talking about love and relationships, and I asked how I would know when I found the right woman. His words were now ringing in my ears. It's different for everyone, but when you kiss her, maybe your knees will go weak. Or maybe you'll feel a glow, like you've been filled with electricity. Maybe it will manifest itself in some other way. It doesn't matter. You'll know. I couldn't remember feeling such confirmation with Haley. Of course, our kisses were full of passion, but now I realized that it was purely physical. I never felt the real connection that my father talked about. So, to my surprise, I was... Fine, I was still disappointed with her behavior, but I was coping well. I entered the apartment at seven without knocking. Harper sat at the kitchen table, looking at the incriminating photo and my ring. Calmly and clearly resigned to the inevitable, she greeted me with words that summed it all up. We're done, aren't we? I sat down opposite her. Yes. Aren't you going to scream or swear? Why? Should I? I would be in your place. I think I've finally seen the real you, Harper. And the truth is, we're not right for each other. Moreover, I don't think I've ever really loved you the way people in a marriage should love each other. I don't think so. That you love me that way, too. Let's break up, keep it civil, and move on. Okay? I was surprised she wasn't more emotional. She simply shrugged, which made it clear to me what she was thinking, even more convincing than her next words. I guess I really wasn't ready for marriage. I wanted to be ready. You're the type of man I wanted to settle down with, and I wanted to be the girl and wife you wanted. I really did. You're right. It's just not me. Today, at the bar, Linda seemed thoughtful as I finished my story about Harper. Wow. Looks like you dodged a bullet when you realized the truth so early in your marriage. I didn't realize my marriage was a lie until we were 14. Don't take it hard because you are a truly beautiful woman, but I can see the pain in your face when you talk about it. I think no matter how long it takes, learning the truth can be very painful, but at least you can move forward, maybe a little wiser. Leaning my elbow on the bar counter, I rested my head on my hand and looked into her eyes. Something tells me I need to hear your story, too. I'm getting better. But yes, I will share my story someday. But we've only been through one deception of your story, and I need to hear the whole thing. If you need it, this ends better than it started. So maybe this will give you some encouragement. Linda looked away for a moment and seemed to be deep in thought. Are you still seeing Harper? Sometimes. Shortly after our divorce, she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. It forced her to grow up quickly. She carries herself well and ends up marrying a nice guy. 
they seem right for each other. You're not the kind of guy who likes karma to bite his ex in the ass, are you? No, and I certainly don't. Having a disease or something like multiple sclerosis is not something I would wish on anyone. And I still have good feelings for Harper. We parted on good terms. So who's number two? I couldn't help but grin. Number two, an apt description of how things turned out with Zoe. I met Zoe at a party thrown for my old friends, Aubrey and Dennis. They married in college, and after graduation, Dennis took a position with a large manufacturing company. At a very young age, he was promoted to vice president of finance and had to move to Dallas. All their friends gathered in the Hyatt Ballroom to wish them luck on their move. I was talking to a friend when the room seemed to light up as Zoe walked in with an aura of glamour and grace. She was, in a word, amazing. I later found out that her photo was on the cover of Maxime about a year ago. Every man, including me, had to wipe the drool from his lips. Most of the men there were married, and their wives were with them. Then the funniest thing happened. No army general could have organized a defense faster or more effectively than the maneuver that the wives instantly launched. Almost every man has been physically drawn into a serious conversation with his spouse. I was one of three free men left, and Zoe quickly directed her hungry gaze at me. I watched as she deliberately walked towards me, and I instantly feared that the reaction in my pants would soon become apparent. Hi, I'm Zoe. Am I imagining or did about 20 women just demonstrate their rights to their men? I guess it's not your imagination. By the way, I'm Luke. She shook my hand and her touch sent shivers down my spine. Zoe, nice to meet you, Luke. Looks like the ladies must think I'm a threat. You don't seem to have a chain and ball protecting you? No, my chains were broken months ago. And yes, you are a threat. You should know how beautiful you are. Thanks, but you're damn handsome too. I felt a warm rush of blood in my cheeks as I tried to find an appropriate answer. Well, maybe we should spend some time admiring each other's beauty? Oh man, her laugh was amazing. I like you, Luke. You're funny. So maybe we should just hang out and get to know each other better. And so we did. She was smart and charming. We communicated easily, and I was under her spell. She seemed interested in me, too. The party ended, and Zoe and I made a date for the next evening. She had to leave a little early, which gave me time to pay attention to Aubrey and Dennis. Aubrey was still the same pretty girl next door I knew in high school. She still wasn't skinny, but to me, she was perfect. When I approached, she greeted me with some disapproval. Hey, Casanova, did Zoe hook you? We somehow hit it off right away. Why? Be careful. You know Dennis and I value you very much, and we don't want you to get hurt again. She seems harmless, and I really like her. Luke, I love you, friend. Open your eyes. You're repeating a pattern. I was a little upset by Aubrey's rebuke. How could she assume that I didn't know what I was doing? I can handle it. I mean, we just met. I'm not walking down the aisle yet. Okay. I mean, she's smart and successful, so she has a lot going for her. Just promise to keep your eyes open. Please guard your heart. You have a good heart and you're a great guy. You need to find a woman who likes you. Deserves it. I wanted to say it, but I couldn't. I wanted to say, I found this woman, but I let her go. Zoe and I didn't hesitate. It seemed like we were on the same page on all the important issues in life. Less than six months had passed since we got married. I made it clear that loyalty was my number one priority, and she gave me every reason to think she shared that sentiment. She seemed to share my commitment to faith, so I assumed we had what it took to last a lifetime. She owned a small modeling agency and focused on making sure she had a good work-life balance. We got married without much fanfare and began our life together with high hopes for the future. Our home life was warm and fulfilling, and our sex life was fantastic. Zoe never gave me any reason to doubt her commitment to monogamy or our marriage. After three years of marital bliss, we began discussing the possibility of having children. She seemed excited about the prospect, but I noticed that she never really took the steps necessary to get pregnant, such as going off birth control, even though she agreed that she would. However, I was walking on air and felt confident that I had struck gold by having Zoe in my life. 
It seems that just when you think all's right with the world and your life's on the right path, life decides to throw a test at you. It was a dark and rainy Monday when I faced one of the worst days of my life. Aubrey called me at the office early this morning. She rarely called me at work. And from her voice, I knew something was wrong. Aubrey, what happened? I don't want you to worry, but I wanted you to know. Dennis, Dennis has leukemia. Oh my God, did you just find out? I just got back from the hospital. The doctor said there's a lot that can be done today. I hope he's right. How are you? She sighed, and I heard her trying to pull herself together. Yes, the doctor seemed optimistic. It's an unexpected shock, of course. He's been a little tired lately, but we couldn't imagine. But you know, Dennis, he tries to seem cheerful, but I see through his acting. Keep us in your thoughts, okay? She tried to sound encouraging, but I knew my friend too well. She was hiding intense fear and a severe bout of depression. I wanted to be there to hug them both, but it was impossible. We usually spoke on the phone once a month, and I decided to increase this to a weekly minimum. She was thousands of miles away, but my friend needed my support. Our conversation ended and I was overcome with depression. I felt like I was drowning in an ocean of anxiety as I looked out of my office window at the gloomy, rainy landscape. I was confronted with this news when my friend, Melanie's personal assistant, quietly walked into my office and closed the door. Her face was flushed and her eyes were red, as if she had been crying, and I assumed that she had found out about Dennis and Aubrey. I was wrong. Luke, you know that I love you and would never want to hurt you, right? Mel, you're scaring me. What happened? I've been worried all week about this, but you should know. My husband and I had dinner and danced on Saturday to celebrate our anniversary. We went to a jazz club downtown and... She started crying. My head was racing, trying to guess what she was going to tell me. Then it dawned on me. Zoe was supposed to be at a partner's meeting on Saturday in Portland and stayed overnight. What, Mel? Your wife was there with some guy and they... Well, I took some pictures. Oh, God, I'm so sorry, Luke. The photos were pretty clear. Caresses under the table, body-to-body -body dancing and passionate kisses were clearly visible. My tears flowed like Snoqualmie Falls. First, the terrible news about Dennis and Aubrey tore my emotions apart, and now Zoe had betrayed me. Melanie consoled me with hugs and apologies. I was able to calm down and thank her for telling me and apologized for Zoe ruining their weekend. Mel forwarded the photos to me and I printed out the more graphic ones to use that evening. I recognized the guy as one of the models Zoe managed. I stopped at a pub on the way home to drink some courage for confrontation. Kaylee was great at helping me calm down. Several of my friends from my football days were there too. I didn't know at the time, but the two of them hatched a plan to teach Zoe's lover a lesson. Later, I found out that they found him and beat him to a pulp. I kinda wish they wouldn't do it, but at the same time, I felt a lot of guilt for being secretly happy about it. Waiting for Zoe to return home seemed like an eternity. My stomach hurts. My thoughts switched between anger, hatred, regret, thoughts of forgiveness, and pain. When she finally came in, I was sitting at the dinner table with my evidence ready to be presented. She entered the room cheerfully and joyfully. Hello, dear. She came to kiss me and I pushed her away. Sit down, now. She sat down so quickly that she almost missed the chair. Luke, why are you talking to me like that? Don't know. I laid out the photographs on the table one by one. Is there any other way I should talk to you? She looked at the first one and immediately turned pale. Her tears flowed freely and might have melted me a day ago. Now they only annoyed me. So, what part of loyalty didn't you understand? Luke, I... What? What are you going to say? Is it just sex? It doesn't mean anything? You only love me? What can you even say to justify yourself? Please don't hate me. Give me a few days to cool off. I'll never again... Never what? Never do this again? How many times have you done this with this guy? How many other guys have there been? I can't believe you betrayed me like that, especially knowing how Harper cheated on me. 
You just don't understand a woman like me. Understand. My anger boiled over. I pulled her neck until her face was inches from mine and screamed as loud as I could. I absolutely understand who you are. I would call you a pig, but that would be an insult to pigs. You tricked me, didn't you? I'm sure you and your boy love talking about me while he was taking you from me. I pushed her away roughly because I was afraid of what I might do. I saw fear in her eyes, and it both pleased and scared me. I couldn't look at her face anymore, so I turned my back to her to gather the strength to speak more calmly. I guess I'll never understand a liar or a traitor. You really deceived me. You betrayed me and everything I thought we had. Damn! I didn't think I could be so hurt, but congratulations, you... It worked. I understand exactly what you are, and I know for sure that I can never trust you again. I walked around a few times, trying to calm my anger while she cried quietly. I want you to leave this house tonight. My lawyer is already preparing the divorce papers. The preliminary agreement comes into force because you set yourself up. You have half an hour to leave and we will communicate via text about, how are you going to get the rest of your things? I was about to leave and she was in tears. I did not care. Luke, please, I love only you. Please don't leave. I stopped, turning my back to Zoe as I looked at the floor. Love! Well, I don't love you anymore. When I look at you, all I see is ugliness and absolutely nothing I want. And don't you dare say you love me. Love doesn't do what you did to me. Now get out of here before I come back and tell your boyfriend to run. Fast and far. Linda was careful when she made her observation. Your reaction seemed stronger to me than I expected. Although we just met, I got the impression that you are a kinder and gentler person. Luke is truly both kind and gentle, Kaylee added. But betrayal can awaken the beast in us all. Yes, I admit that I may have been a little crazy. But Linda, you've obviously been on the wrong side too, so maybe you can understand. With Harper, I knew we were never, I thought Zoe was the one with all my heart, and she tore my heart out. I said those things to blow off steam and maybe hurt her as much as I could without resorting to physical force. But then, what I said was true. Maybe she'll learn a lesson from this, or not. How did it end after that? Were you able to somehow find closure or go your separate ways amicably? I calmed down, and we eventually talked. If it had just been a mistake, I think I would have tried to save our marriage. After all, I'm not perfect, so I was hoping for forgiveness if the roles were reversed. But there was a scam that had been going on since before our marriage, and she couldn't even commit to ending it. So we separated, but not on the most amicable terms. Surprisingly, Zoe meekly accepted the divorce as it was presented. She moved to New York, and I have never seen or heard of her since. What happened to her lover? You said he was beaten badly. Did that affect you in any way? He had a lot of bruises and was in a lot of pain for a while, but he recovered. What upset him the most was a scar over his eye that threatened his modeling career but even that faded over time. Strangely, Zoe was my alibi. As the attack happened 45 miles away at the time, I ran into Zoe in our dining room. I admit that my first reaction was a feeling that justice had been served, but that quickly passed. Of course, he was a bastard, but I didn't want this to happen and I never instigated it. So that's two. It seems you chose the same type of woman, expecting different results. I smiled sadly. You sound like my friends. They all tried to tell me the same thing, but apparently I'm a slow learner since I went down a similar path after Zoe. Are you kidding? No. I would. As sad as it was, I think you'll like how I found out about Samantha cheating. My divorce it was finally said in October 2016. I decided to fly to Dallas to see Aubrey and Dennis and spend Thanksgiving with them. As usual, there was a lot of air travel this week, and I found myself in SeaTac waiting several hours due to delays. I was concentrating on my beer in the lounge when a beautiful blonde sat down across from me, having an intense conversation on the phone. Listen, I can't control what the airlines do. I can't walk up to the gate and demand that we take off because you demand that I arrive on time. The flight is delayed. I'll be later than expected. She had cute dimples that danced across her face as she spoke, and I couldn't help but smile to myself. She ended the connection without waiting for a response from the other end. 
and muttered a few words under her breath. Then, looking at me, she realized that I could not help but hear her conversation and assumed that I was laughing at her. Are you laughing at me, idiot? Oh, God, no, I'm sorry if it came across that way. I didn't mean to hear you. Then what are you laughing at? I got hooked and decided that honesty was the best policy. Sorry, I hope this doesn't offend you, but, well, I notice you have these amazing, beautiful dimples that really dance on your face when you argue with someone. Luckily, she laughed and blushed, trying to hide her dimples. Sorry, my mom can make me annoyed when she acts like that. She thinks the whole world revolves around her schedule, and it's my fault I'm late. Moms can be like that. Are you okay? Oh, yeah, I love my mom, but air travel is hard enough, and I don't need her attitude right now. Oh, your phone is ringing. It's her. Trust me, I'm doing her a favor by not answering. I'm not in the mood, and I can't be responsible for anything that might come out of my mouth. Can I buy you a mood-setting drink? A drink from a stranger? She showed off a girly look with a shy smile and dimples on full display. I'm not that kind of girl. Well, I'm Luke, and you? She laughed, smiled, and exclaimed with feigned annoyance, I'm Samantha, or Sam to friends. See? We're not strangers now. What are you going to drink, Sam? We talked for almost two hours before my flight was finally announced. I was captivated by her wit and charm. She didn't have the cover beauty of Harper or Zoe, but she was still extremely attractive. Her smile was a little crooked, similar to Drew Barrymore, and combined with those wonderful dimples, I found her sexy as hell. She had the body of an athlete, which made me feel like a high school sports star who had let himself go a little. I decided that this needed to be fixed. I was almost sorry to hear the airline's announcement. Damn, Sam, I really enjoyed getting to know you. Do you live here in the Seattle area? Yes, I live in Redmond. I'm almost there in Kirkland. Can I be so bold as to ask if you're in a relationship? Because I'd like to take you out to dinner and get to know you better. My opinion of how cute she was only intensified when she wrinkled her nose. Wow, you move fast, but you seem pretty cute, so... Okay, give me your phone. Of course, here. Okay, my information is now in your contacts as Sam, and you can call me any time after I get home next Wednesday. Thank you. I have to say, I never thought I'd be this happy after having to wait for a flight. She was extremely sexy when she laughed. Me too. I may even be in a good enough mood to call my mom back. We hugged and I felt in seventh heaven. She stepped back from our embrace and looked into my eyes. Do you really like my dimples? Or was that just a nice phrase? Trust me, I really, really like them. Luke? Yes. Please don't be weird. I don't want to have to beat you up. I was glad she laughed. Don't worry. I'm so ordinary that I'm more afraid of being boring to you than anything else. The flight was great because I felt like I didn't even need the plane. I was filled with lust with the hope of love on the horizon. Chemistry seemed more than right. Dennis met me in Dallas, and I was surprised at how good he looked. On the way to his house, he told me the good news that he was in remission. He is one of the truly good guys on this earth, and I couldn't be happier or relieved to know he's doing well. Dennis and Aubrey had three children, and their home seemed like the place I always wanted for myself. Love was everywhere. Aubrey prepared a fantastic feast and took the time to scold me for choosing narcissistic women for marriage instead of finding a girl with good character. In the back of my mind, I wondered what category Sam would fit into if we ended up in a relationship. I decided to call Sam on Thursday when we both got home. I was expecting a quick conversation to plan a date, but our conversation turned into a two-hour marathon. My mind was spinning with happiness by the time our conversation ended. I felt a huge smile on my face and enjoyed the moment. Then I realized that I wanted her. I couldn't wait to pick her up on our date. I was so excited that I had to restrain myself from leaving too early. Her apartment was only three miles from my house, and I expected to spend a lot of time moving between our homes in the coming months. On our first date, we went to one of my favorite places, Matt's Restaurant, 
rotisserie, and oyster house. We talked easily and I could not take my eyes off her. I fell in love much faster than I wanted, but it was clear that I was falling in love. The longer we talked, the more beautiful she seemed to me. Our conversation turned to light kisses during dessert. We had barely walked out the door when she pulled me into a passionate, wet kiss. Luke, you have no idea how much I want you to come to me. Oh, I think I understand how much, but I want to slow down a little. Is that okay? Yeah, probably. You still haven't gotten over the divorce, so let's take our time. Thank you for your understanding. You're much more understanding than my little brain. Luke, I've been lusting after you since the moment you told me your name at the airport, but let's take it at a leisurely pace. That suits me. Cold showers worked for a few weeks, but by Christmas we realized we were in love and let our passions flare. I've never run a marathon, but getting intimate with Sam was the most intense workout I've had since I played football at Purdue. Luckily, her favorite position was cowgirl, so I had time to catch my breath. I wanted to make sure I could handle it, so I started living a healthier lifestyle as my biggest New Year's resolution. A few months later, Sam moved into my home just in time for Valentine's Day. There was no doubt that we were an exclusive couple and were moving quickly towards commitment. We were planning a small and intimate wedding for the summer. Sam played sports at a competitive level and remained active in a variety of sports. Hiking, kayaking, biking, and running filled our weekends when we weren't busy with the sleeping Olympics. She was actively visiting the local gym, and I decided to sign up too. We made working out a competition, so I bought us both a Fitbit and an iPad app that allowed us to track our fitness progress as individuals and as a couple. I was in the best shape of my life. The wedding was scheduled for the first Saturday in August. We invited only immediate family and a few friends. My personal assistant, Melanie, came with her husband. Aubrey and Dennis flew in to visit. I felt like I could do it this time and couldn't wait for Sam to become Mrs. Riley. The wedding was in from all, with only 37 guests, so Sam didn't feel stressed. Sister Sam was the breed Smaid, and she didn't bother choosing other participants. Our priest performed the ceremony right in the reception hall, avoiding a problems with transportation or loss of time. I stood with the priest, waiting for my bride to come to me. Before the procession, I examined the guests. Melanie was sitting a few rows back and beaming at me, but I didn't see Aubrey or Dennis. I hoped they didn't have any problems with the flight. We said yes, kissed, and started celebrating. The longer the appointment went on, the more worried I became that I wasn't seeing Aubrey or Dennis. About two hours into my appointment, I felt my phone vibrate with an incoming text message. Luke, I'm sorry we missed your special day. I didn't want you to worry or ruin your celebration, but Dennis's cancer has returned. He went to the hospital yesterday. Don't worry. We're okay. But I'm so sorry I couldn't be there for you. Call me when you get back from your honeymoon. I told Sam and she agreed that I needed to call Aubrey immediately. I called and she tried to convince me that everything would be fine, but we knew each other too well. Dennis was in trouble, and she couldn't hide how scared she was. Sam and I honeymooned in Hawaii, and I tried not to think about the difficulties Dennis and Aubrey faced on their own. All things considered, it was a wonderful trip, and I was comforted by Sam's understanding and attention to my emotional needs, in addition to her considerable skill in meeting my physical needs. A few weeks later, in mid-September, Sam and I flew to Dallas for a long weekend to visit Dennis and Aubrey. When I walked into their home, their son and two daughters nearly knocked me off my feet, hugging and greeting their Uncle Luke. But the real blow for me was seeing Dennis. The big, strong center on my high school football team was skinny and weak. His complexion was gray, and there was an air of death about him. I tried not to show shock and tried to treat my friend the same way I always did. After dinner, Sam helped Aubrey with the dishes, and Dennis took me to his office. Luke, you probably realized that I won't win this battle. Come on, Dennis, you're a fighter. Life is a fight that we all lose eventually, my friend. I've come to terms with that. My biggest concern is Aubrey and the kids. They'll be okay financially. I've taken care of that but promise me you'll look after them. Okay, I think they'll stay here in Dallas, but the kids will need contact with their godfather, Uncle Luke, 
and Aubrey is his best friend. You didn't have to ask, but I promise. You know I love you, man. Do you understand? I know. The feelings are mutual. You're a good person, Luca, and a good friend. I couldn't stop my lips from trembling. I thought guys weren't supposed to cry. Dennis had difficulty speaking, clearly embarrassed. Real guys cry, buddy? Can silence be warm and sad at the same time? She stayed like that for a few moments until Dennis changed the subject. By the way, Sam seems wonderful. I hope you and her have a long, happy life together. Two weeks later, Dennis left. The farewell ceremony and burial took place in Washington, where their families lived. Aubrey and the children stayed with us for several weeks while we tried to help them get through this difficult time. Yet again, Sam was wonderful and a true partner during difficult times. A few months later, Sam came to me with an idea. You know Hugh, the owner of the gym? He's about to retire and asked if we'd like to buy the place. Really? What do you want to do? My career at Microsoft isn't bad, but it's more like a dream. It's what I'd like to do. Well, I don't really want to change careers. I've gotten too comfortable and made a lot of money in the market. Why don't you do it yourself? Alone? I guess I could, but I don't have that kind of money. Maybe I can help. How much is Hugh asking for? I have enough to pay for the business he's selling, but he also wants to sell me a building. That part is worth two million, which I don't have and don't think I can find. I was thinking about starting a company for the purpose of investing in real estate as my portfolio had grown significantly, giving me a lot of freedom to branch out into other investments. We moved forward with my company and named it Riley Investments. Sam created a separate company in her name for the gym, after which Riley Investments provided her with a line of credit for some improvements and to cover fluctuating operating costs in the first few years of operation. Our accountant and lawyer prepared the agreements, and our new ventures were successfully launched. The night all the paperwork was signed, I was showered with kisses and we celebrated energetically in bed all weekend. Microsoft asked Sam to stay on as a consultant at a significant hourly rate. We discussed the pros and cons, but we both understood that the extra income would really improve her financial situation. Less than a month later, it became clear that the new business would be a great success. Owning a business and working for Microsoft, including occasional travel, created a lot of workload for Sam. She had energy, but I had to help out at the gym if she needed to leave town. We were happy, although we began to plan to start a family. Sam thought it might work if she ended up leaving her job at Microsoft. Right after our first anniversary, Sam was scheduled to travel to Atlanta for three days to support software development. As usual, we talked every evening and shared details of our days. On the second night of her trip, she called just after 3 Dawao p.m. Pacific time, or 6 Dawao p.m. Atlanta time. Hi, Sam. How was your day? Great. We've done a lot, but there's still more to do. I can't talk much as some of the team are going to continue working over dinner. Can I make it up to you tomorrow? Of course. I was going to stop by the gym tonight to check on how it's doing, so I might as well see how the staff there is doing. Okay. Love you, honey. And I love you, too. I went to the gym and decided to work out before taking time to check things out in the office. I was pleased with how things were going and stayed until 9 o'clock in the evening. I was tempted to call Sam, but it was after midnight in her time zone, and I was sure she had had a long day. I took a shower and wanted to pass the time by playing a game on my iPad. The Fitbit app caught my attention, and I decided to see what my progress looked like. Opening the app, I felt the blue drain from my face. My stomach churned as I saw evidence of the destruction of my life. Sam played sports. Her Fitbit was active. At almost 1 a.m. her time, why would she exercise? The more I looked the clearer the pattern became and I immediately knew what she was doing. I needed to call her. The first time she tried, her phone rang before going to voicemail. She had a special ringtone for me, so she must have known who was calling. I tried several times and they all went to voicemail. Finally, on the fifth try, Sam answered. Honey, is everything okay? No, it's not okay. 
Are you hurt or in the hospital or something? Hurt? Yes, I was badly hurt. Oh no, what happened? What's his name? Whose name? What are you talking about? That guy you ride as a cowgirl. What's his name? What do you mean? I don't... Tell me, Sam, why? Luke, I... How are you... Are you here? Will you answer my question? Oh, damn. How did you know? Next time you have sex with someone other than your husband, take it off, damn it. Take your Fitbit. I ended the call, turned off the phone, and threw it across the room. Sleeping was not an option. I went for a walk to cool down, but instead I walked for miles crying. This couldn't happen. Not again. How do I keep ending up with wives who can't stay faithful? I returned home with some tasks that needed to be completed. We kept our finances separate, but we had several joint accounts and credit cards for household expenses. I sat down at the computer, transferred money from the accounts to one of mine, and closed the ones I could online. I sent a late email to the law firm asking for an appointment with a divorce lawyer as soon as possible. The next day, I took the day off to get my affairs in order. I had my divorce papers ready, taking into account the preliminary agreement. I met with my accountant and lawyer to begin the process of foreclosure on my loan to Sam for the gym, which was a condition in the loan documents allowing me to claim the full principal amount with 60 days' notice. How could I be such an idiot? How did she deceive me? Every fiber of my being hacked, and I wanted her to experience that pain and more. The vengeful fool in me wanted to destroy it. I hadn't spoken to Sam since the incident, so I didn't know what her plans were for returning home. It didn't help that I broke my phone and had to buy a new one. I immediately blocked Sam's number. I needed a friend, so I called Aubrey. She calmed me down and begged me to be less vindictive. She was my conscience when I didn't want her, but I promised her I'd try. I considered stopping at a pub, but if Sam stuck to her original travel schedule, she should be back soon. I wanted to end the confrontation and hoped to return home before she arrived. I was not lucky. I walked in and Sam was crying. She rushed towards me, trying to hug me, but I pushed her away. Don't touch me, Sam. Oh, please, oh, God. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Forgiveness, it won't happen. Don't go, please. I don't want to lose you. Lose? No, you threw us away. Luke, please, I was stupid, I thought. Thinking? Thinking about what? That you could get away with it? Or maybe that I wouldn't care? Or did your brain tell you that it wouldn't matter if you broke our vows, or that you might not respect me having sex on the side, and it won't change anything? Or what about the thought that risking killing my love for you and breaking my heart is worth it? Haven't you thought? No, no. Then what stupid explanation came into your head? Go ahead, justify yourself. It wasn't justified, okay? It was just stupid casual sex. Case? You've got to be kidding. How often do you have casual sex, huh? Do you sleep with guys at the gym? I can't understand how you could even come up with that reason. I was just thinking. Here you are again, trying to tell me you've thought it over. If the problem is your libido, I was just a call away for a little phone sex. If you can't go two or three days without, then you're out of control. Please, Luke, help us get through this. Let's sum it up, dear. You allowed another man, whom you still haven't named, to become intimate with you in a way that belonged only to you and me. Don't give me nonsense about what this is your body, and you can do with it whatever you want. It's yours and mine. Giving up everyone else until death do us part. Remember that? Well, there was death. Our marriage died as soon as he put you to bed. She cried deeper than I had ever heard from a human being. I wanted to enjoy her pain, but it was killing me too. Pull yourself together, shut up and listen. You will be served with divorce papers in the next few days. No, no, please, no divorce. Help me fix this. Listen, damn it. The terms of the preliminary agreement for adultery are going into effect. You will get very little of this. I also demand the loan be repaid. The balance of the principal amount is just over 350000 You will have 60 days to pay it off or you will lose it. The gym is in my favor. No, Luke, you will destroy me. I said shut up and listen. I won't demand the loan back if you sign the divorce papers. Resist and I will demand everything. I don't care about the money or the gym, I just want you. Please, let's try to get through this. No, Sam. 
You knew my painful history with cheating wives. You swore you wouldn't do this to me, and yet a year later you did exactly that. I can never trust you again, especially when you show such little respect for me, knowing what it would do to me. Damn, Luke, I made a big mistake. I'm not perfect, but neither are you. Are you telling me you never wanted to be with another woman? I controlled my anger to remain calm. I bit my lips so hard I could taste blood. Yes, I'm not perfect. Everyone has fantasies. The difference is that you acted on yours. I would never do that. Please, stop begging. It makes me feel bad. But we were planning a family. What? Do you really think that I would want my children to have a mother who thinks the way you obviously think? I want kind, respectful, moral, loving children who will make this world a better place. I don't want their lives to be influenced by someone who could do what you did. She started crying bitterly again, and I really didn't want to hear it. I left and told her I'd be back in a day or two when we'd both calmed down. It was hard to leave the broken woman. I loved sobbing inconsolably on the floor. At first, I hoped that she felt as destroyed as I did, but I felt terrible guilt for the way I left her. Plus, I needed to leave before I broke down. I didn't want her to see it. After a few days, I calmed down. We talked, and I agreed to go to counseling to see if our relationship could be saved. I didn't want to be a thrice loser, and I really cared about her. I just didn't know if I could ever get back that feeling of having her as my life partner. After six weeks of seeing the counselor, we were driving home from our last session, and Sam was unusually quiet. I glanced at her several times and saw tears slowly rolling down her cheeks. Like a lot of guys, I'm not particularly attentive, but I knew this night would change everything. We entered the house and walked in silence, and Sam broke the silence. Can we talk? I need to tell you a story. Of course, dear. I assumed she had chosen to sit next to me on the couch to avoid eye contact. Sam took a deep breath and fought for composure as she began her story. When I was a child, I was very close to my dad. I was his princess, and he was my hero, as it should be. My sister and I would always snuggle up on his couch while we watched a movie or just relax together after dinner. Even in my years of teenage rebellion, we were close. When I was 16, I made him a promise of purity in our church that I would keep myself until marriage. I didn't make that promise lightly. I meant every word. Our church had similar events when I was a kid. Yeah, it was common back then. Anyway, I started dating a guy from our Sunday school class. We dated for about a year, and he kept pestering me to get closer. On my 18th birthday, I gave in, and Pandora's box was open. I couldn't get enough. I know how you work. Yeah. Anyway, one night when the rest of the family had to go to a banquet, my boyfriend and I were left home alone. Of course, we were naked as soon as the family car left the driveway. About 15 minutes later, we were doing it, and yes, I was active. I looked up and saw my dad in the doorway, looking at us. He was diabetic and forgot his insulin, so he had to go back for it. His mouth was trembling, as if he was about to say something, but instead, he just walked away. I covered myself enough to run after him, even though I didn't know what I was going to say. Right before I left the house, he turned to me. He had tears in his eyes, and I felt like I'd been struck by lightning. I couldn't move. Then he calmly said, You're a grown woman now, and you can make your own choices. Then he left. He took it quite calmly. No, not really. I hurt him terribly. But what broke my heart was the look in his eyes that night and every day after that, until he died. Before that, when he looked at me, it was impossible not to notice the look of love. I would have sworn his eyes sparkled. But after that night, that look disappeared. When he looked at me, I felt that he saw only a sight that no father should see. Sam was covered in tears and pain, remembering her past. I felt a chill run down my spine as I realized why she had brought herself to tell me about this terrible moment from her past. I wanted to say something, but decided to let her finish. We never slept together after that. Oh, sure, we hugged when we said hello or goodbye, but the closeness of daddy and princess was gone. We were loving, but now we were father and daughter. She stopped to collect herself, and I hugged her, partly to comfort her, 
but mostly to show her that I understood. Luke, now when I look into your eyes, I see the same look that my father had. Every time you look at me, you relive my betrayal. I feel that you desperately want this to go away. So we can go back to the way things were before I messed everything up, but you can't do that. I'm sorry, I'm not keeping this to punish you or anything. I still love you. I know you love it, but that look will always be there. You can't trust me no matter how much you want to, no matter what I do to make you believe that I will be faithful and never leave again. Deep down, you'll always be afraid of that old saying, once a cheater, always a cheater. There's nothing we can do. I've broken what we can't fix, so things can be the same. Are you saying we're giving up? I'm saying that you deserve someone you can trust with all your heart, and that I deserve to find someone who looks at me the way you did before I was stupid. I'm saying that we both need to move on separately. Linda's emotions were on edge. Tears flowed down her cheeks in quiet weeping. I also had several of my own from experiencing this nightmare. After I left Sam at the house, I came here to the pub. I walked in, and Kaylee knew right away when she looked at me. Kaylee wiped away her own tears as she remembered that evening. I saw Luke come in and immediately saw that he was about to collapse. I shouted to Pete to watch the bar and took Luke into the office. The door had barely closed before he collapsed into my arms and sobbed. Linda fixed her gaze on her beer. I know this feeling. I know this pain. Kaylee calmed me down and talked to me for a few hours. She finally made me laugh a little, and then she came up with a nickname for me. Three Treason in the Wind? Yes, Kaylee said. I told him that he would get through it and eventually he would be able to just let go of the pain and let the wind carry it away like he had done two times before. He swore he would never put himself in that position again. I knew him too much. It's good to believe that he will live alone, but I thought he needed time. Linda put her hand on mine with a slight smile on her face. But you look okay now. In fact, you look better than okay. You give me hope. I just moved here for a fresh start, and fate seems to have brought us together, I guess. You could share your story with me. You seem happy now. I finally realized that I was making the same mistake over and over again. It started in high school when I decided that sex, image, and guaranteed confidence were more important than shared values and respect. I had the perfect woman and I let her slip out of my hands by never stopping looking for the wrong things. You were thinking about Aubrey. I closed my eyes and smiled. Oh yeah, it took me a few months to be ready to move on after Sam, but I knew the woman I needed and wanted was always my best friend. And you went to Dallas and won her heart? Kaylee grinned and lightly tapped the bar counter. You'd think he'd do something so simple, but no. Luke the genius managed to screw it up here too. Thank you, Kaylee's mom. Linda's face looked as if she was watching a tragedy unfold. You didn't go get Aubrey? Of course I went. But I waited with her because I didn't know if she was ready to move on after Dennis died. We kept in touch, and I tried to feel when the right time would be to confess my love. Kaylee was my stronghold here. I was ready to tell Kaylee that I bought tickets to fly to Aubrey. Of course, I planned to win her heart as soon as I got there. What happened? I woke up after a sleepless night. In fact, I couldn't even say I woke up because I never fell asleep, but I woke up with a new sense of purpose. I tossed and turned all night until I decided somewhere around three in the morning. I'll go to Dallas to tell Aubrey how I feel. If everything goes according to plan, I will return home, engaged to the woman I have wanted my entire adult life. Once I made this decision, I couldn't sleep because I needed to fight my fears and embrace my excitement. I was a complete mess but I was determined to find out if she shared my feelings. It was Friday morning and I had some work to do, so I went to the office and frantically did what absolutely needed to be done and managed to buy a plane ticket for the next day to go to Dallas. It took longer to complete my tasks than I had hoped, but I made it in time for four in the afternoon and arrived at the pub to tell Kaylee about my plans. Three betrayals, Luke. You're early today. I know, and I shouldn't linger, but I had to tell you that I finally decided to go to Aubrey. I have to tell her. Well, you don't... Listen, I need to run and get ready. I want to swing by the jewelry store to make sure I arrive with the ring. Luke, listen. Kaylee, thanks for all the help. I couldn't have done it without... 
Luke, shut up and listen. I need to get these drinks out, but if you shut up for a minute and turn around, I think you'll realize you don't need to go to Dallas. What? What do you mean? Look at the stall by the toilets. I'll be back soon. I turned around, and my heart jumped, but just as quickly fell into the abyss. I recognized her profile enough to recognize Aubrey, and she was sitting with some guy, holding his hand across the table. They smiled at each other like two people sharing a common love. The pain in my stomach was unbearable. I quickly left the bar before making a fool of myself. I was shocked. My brain was a complete mess, and I couldn't put two simple thoughts together. I turned off the phone and just drove around, feeling sorry for myself. I continued to drive with my thoughts racing until tears made it difficult to see. I realized I had reached West Seattle, so I walked down to Alki Beach to stop for a while. My eyes lit up when I finally found a parking spot. I parked and just sat there, crying like a baby. Finally pulling myself together, I walked out onto the sidewalk along the beach and just sat there. Watching the sun set over the water, thoughts of all kinds flooded my head, but I still couldn't concentrate and felt completely lost. It was about midnight before I was able to return home. I showered, got dressed, then drove to the office around 1 a.m., hoping to occupy my mind with something else. Apart from canceling my flight, I achieved nothing. I fell asleep on the office couch for a few hours, then just sat in the chair by the window, searching for answers that seemed out of reach. Should I let her go? Should I fight for her? I couldn't bring myself to decide which way was right and which way was wrong. Finally, around 2 p.m., I went to the pub to see Kaylee. I realized I left last night without talking to her after she warned me that Aubrey was there on a date, so she was probably worried. I walked in and Kaylee saw me immediately, but her expression wasn't what I expected. I expected her to be concerned about me, but she was clearly angry. You fucking idiot! What the hell were you thinking running out of there? She put the beer in front of me and, without letting me get a word in, decided to start yelling at me. You idiot! You made me worry, idiot. I need to pass out these drinks, but you stay in your seat until I get back. The words she actually used were changed to protect the innocent. Kaylee never swore, especially at me, so I decided it was better to remain silent. What made her so angry? She continued to get angry at me and shake her head, muttering terrible things about me under her breath. She messaged someone, then served other customers, all the while giving me her angry looks. It took her about ten minutes to finish her business before she finally stood in front of me, looking like a demon trying to pierce my soul with her gaze. She was obviously trying to control her mood before speaking. I froze in fear and remained silent. What a fool you are. I thought you were going to come to Aubrey's table, but instead, you ran out the door. What the hell have you done? What kind of sucker has gotten you? I... I couldn't... Shut up. You spend months, no, years telling me how much you love Aubrey, and then you run away without talking to her? But... You warned me. You showed me where they were. Warned? About what? Damn, Kaylee. You know I love her more than life itself. I told you I was going to Dallas to finally confess my feelings and ask her to marry me. In my head, I had already committed myself to Aubrey, the woman I loved with everything I have. I've loved her since I was a child, and I would do anything to have her as mine. When you warned me by showing me where she was sitting with her boyfriend, I realized that maybe Aubrey had other plans with this guy. Kaylee's face softened significantly, but then I noticed that she was not looking at me but somewhere behind me. Then I felt a gentle hand on my back and heard the voice of an angel. Is this really how you feel about me, Luke? I've waited almost twenty years to hear these words from you. I spun around on the bar stool and Aubrey pulled me towards her. Our lips met and our tongues danced with a fury and passion like I had never experienced. I felt our hearts and minds merging into a single loving being. Our souls soared into a new dimension, as if we could leave our bodies and look down upon a heavenly blessed union. After three mariegas and a number of other relationships, just one real kiss made me understand what my father had been trying to tell me all these years. It was confirmed beyond a shadow of a doubt in my mind. Aubrey was the one. 
She was the true love I was always looking for and needing. Linda couldn't hide her tears. Did you almost miss out on the woman of your dreams again? Kaylee looked at me with a raised eyebrow. That's right. Once he had recovered from their rather erotic display of affection, I asked him what he was thinking about doing such an act. I told you, she was sitting with another guy. Kaylee looked ready to tell me off again, but I saw a sparkle in her eyes. Then I told him he was a complete fool for making such assumptions without checking them. A smile spread across my face as I felt her hands on my shoulders before she spoke. Kaylee, are you teasing Luke again? I turned around to see my love and pulled her lips to mine. After a few seconds, Kaylee sneezed and cleared her throat. Hey, do you want some privacy? This show of affection is embarrassing for all the other customers. Aubrey smiled back at her. We'll definitely use the room in a few days, won't we, dear? Linda smiled, wiping tears from her sparkling eyes. You make a great couple. Oh, sorry. Linda, let me introduce you to my fiancé. Hi, Linda. Luke's mannerisms are a little out of control. I'm Aubrey. Linda beamed with happiness through her tears. Aubrey, I'm so glad to meet you. Luke talked all about you in the evening. I have to say, if he ended up with anyone other than you, it would be the worst story I've ever heard. It's so cool when childhood friends end up together. Luke, were you talking about me? You're the only topic worth talking about. She kissed me tenderly again. Ah, uh, you're so cute. She raised her eyebrows and turned her attention to Linda. I wouldn't say we were lovers. We were definitely best friends, that's for sure. I had to clarify. I think we both wanted to be more than friends, but we struggled trying to find a way to move from friendship to something more. Aubrey laughed and said, Actually, Luke was a horny teenager, and I was too serious to be the subject of his experiments. Okay, she's right. Sometimes I wonder how things would have turned out if I had matured much earlier. I always loved her and settled down with three women who had her outer beauty but were empty inside and could never compare to what she was and remains. Well, Aubrey, Luke was definitely not wrong when he said how beautiful you are. Oh, you're both too kind. All that matters is when I look into his eyes, I see his heart so tightly intertwined with mine. I know he loves me unconditionally and I feel like the luckiest woman. On the ground. Linda took Aubrey's hand and looked at both of us with a concerned look. Wait, what happened to the other guy? Aubrey looked at her with a knowing smile. There was no other guy. It was my cousin, Paul. I stayed with him and his wife for a few weeks while I looked for a house in the area. I was already planning to move back and was hoping Luke would finally get his act together and ask me to marry him. Linda smiled, wiping away a few tears. You're a great couple. Hell, I was hoping I'd have a chance with Luke. She laughed. But I can see it's hopeless. I moved here from California to start over and was hoping to find new friends and maybe a real love. I hope there are a few more people like Luke here who are my age. Kaylee reached across the bar and grabbed my shoulder and Linda's shoulder with her other hand. Linda, you have three new friends here. Aubrey chimed in. Yeah, and you should definitely come to the wedding on Saturday, especially since you're new here. Oh, that's nice, but I can't interfere. To hell with it, girl. Coming to celebrate a wedding between two of your three friends in Seattle is not interfering. We'll be hurt if you don't come. Plus, almost everyone there will be from the area, and I'm sure you'll make a bunch of new ones. Friends. Okay, you've convinced me. Luke, honey, send her the details. You two really are the cutest couple. Don't you think it's pathetic that you both had to go through such hard times to get here? I can't speak for Luke entirely, but I think he needed those experiences to come into his own. For me, I wouldn't trade my time with Dennis or the joy our three children gave me for anything. I love this man with everything I had, so wishing we had started differently with Luke is irrelevant, and in the end, it might not have worked out at all. I think the timing was exactly right, and Lord knows what he's doing. My love for Luke has never left me, and it's just as strong as the love I had for Dennis. I'm just blessed to have two great men in my life to fill it with love. It's so sweet. It's truly a miracle that you two are finally together. It wasn't a miracle. 
It was a conspiracy, I said, as Aubrey smacked me on the head and laughed. Kaylee and Aubrey planned everything behind my back. It's kind of true, Kaylee added. When Luke and Sam broke up, I called Aubrey. Luke had already told her, but I told her that wasn't the reason I called. I asked her when she and Luke would finally understand and get back together. Aubrey giggled as she continued the story. Dennis had been gone for 11 months, and I wasn't ready for another relationship yet. I admit that the idea of being with Luke wasn't new to me, but I wasn't ready yet, and I didn't think that Luke would, given his recent breakup. Luke and I continued to talk at least once a week, and I could hear the anger and pain in his voice. So I told Kaylee to work on his healing process since I knew he was almost here every night, and I would try to gauge his progress when Luke called. I already knew I wanted Luke, and I figured he'd be ready around the same time I was healed enough to move on. I intervened when Aubrey paused. About six months passed, and I found myself unable to think about anything or anyone other than Aubrey. I even considered leaving my job and moving to Dallas to start my own business in hopes that Aubrey will be the future. Of course, he didn't know that I was already planning to return home to Kirkland. Shh, darling, I'm telling you. Carry on, hero. So they planned when Aubrey would show up at the bar to catch me off guard. And then that fool almost ruined everything with his evaporation. Kaylee, you can't let the guy tell his story. Sorry, carry on. Like I said, that's when I almost ruined everything. You know the rest. When Aubrey came up behind me after Kaylee told me off, it was like going from complete darkness to a glorious light. When Aubrey spoke before I could say a word or even finish turning my chair, I received the deepest, most passionate kiss of my life. I felt it, as if a flash of electricity had triggered my heart to begin beating for the first time. That was an incredible kiss, darling. That was an incredible kiss, darling. Every kiss with you is like this. Anyway, when we finally pulled away from each other, she looked me in the eyes and asked, Tell them, honey. I asked, Luke, do you really love me as much as you just told Kaylee? He spoke so sweetly about me. And I said, I love you with everything I have, and I want us to be a family. Marry me, Aubrey. That was four weeks ago. Wait, you two organized an entire wedding in four weeks? Linda, I spent 16 years trying to get the woman I always wanted. I knew she was the one for me all along, and I lost her by making too many stupid mistakes. We weren't going to waste another second. The wedding was great. No one will ever convince me that there is a woman more beautiful than Aubrey. Linda actually came to the wedding. She spent a lot of time getting to know a lot of people, but especially paid attention to Aubrey's older brother, who turned out to be single. They have been a hot couple for a few months now, and Linda has become one of our closest friends. I'm no longer Uncle Luke. The kids call me Daddy Luke now. They asked if they should call me Dad. I told them I already loved them like they were my own, but their dad was a special person, and they should always remember him as their dad. Papa, or as Papa Luke became, would be perfect. Before the wedding, Aubrey asked if I wanted a prenup. No way, darling. You are my life and everything in the world to me. Trust me, there is no plan B as far as I'm concerned. So, three betrayals in the wind doesn't go on record? No way. Being married to you is a joy that is so far beyond what I deserve. My days when I married cheaters, behind. Maybe one day our children will write a story about us. Maybe they'll call it it only took four tries or something witty like that. Speaking of children, Mr. Riley, we need to set up a nursery. My three infidelities from the past are now truly gone with the wind and no longer hold sway over me. Now I can say with every fiber of my being, oh yes, life is beautiful. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one.